Hi, I'm Blair with The Verge, and I'm joined today by Joe Belfiore from Microsoft. Thanks Thank you very much you. for joining us, Joe. Uh, we're here at CES uh, in Las Vegas, CES 2012. How's the show been for you? It's great so far. We're excited at Microsoft with a broad range of stuff, but for me, Windows Phone, the Nokia Lumia 900 is exciting. It's a big day. That's a highlight for you, the Lumia 900. Uh, what about the HD Titan 2? How do you feel about well, that? That's pretty exciting too. But um, you know, for me, yesterday being part of the Nokia announcement, getting that device out there, spending time with those guys, um, uh, it's definitely meaningful. They're a key partner for us. We're excited about the Titan 2. Yeah. Um, generally, lots of good stuff happening here. Cool. Um, well, we we had heard that you guys would uh, come out with some LTE Windows phones. You've done that with HTC and uh, with Nokia. Um, any other Windows phones that we can look forward to with LTE? Um, well, right now, what we're talking about so far and what the announcements have been at CES have been the two new phones, the, as I said, the one from Nokia and then the one from HTC. So, so far, no additional phones that we're talking about. So far. Uh, well, there's another big mobile event, specifically mobile event, uh, MWC coming up, mm -hmm. and uh, the Lumia 900, quite a few folks uh, we have been disappointed to see that it's a AT&T exclusive, so it's US exclusive. Uh, can we look forward to similar devices in Europe? Um, you know, I, that's a good question for Nokia. I think what they would say is that to the extent that people are excited about that device, um, you know, they're going to look at expanding their lineup over time. But right now, the Lumia 900 really was built for the American market. It's designed for LTE, for AT&T's bands. They're entering into a, a significant partnership with AT&T. So whatever happens in the future, we'll have to see. But um, I hope it is true that people are ex excited enough by that phone that they want in a bunch of other countries and that Nokia gets that feedback. Well, yeah, I mean, I just today I got a chance to play around with it. And I do like it very much myself. I, I got to review the Nokia 9 and the Lumia 800, which was Nokia's first mm -hmm. Windows phone. And the 900 is kind of very much like a scaled up 800, which is kind of a good thing. It's a pretty good thing. Uh, but, you know, you do. Ha have to note the fact that it has WVGA resolution, 800 by 480, uh, which is starting to lag the competition. Can you tell us anything about what Microsoft is planning on that front? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I think if you look at how we built our team and the program on Windows Phone, we've really tried to um, focus our engineering efforts on a relatively narrow set of hardware so that we can optimize it greatly. And if you look at the chipsets, for example, we're on Qualcomm chipsets, the Snapdragon chipsets. And if you look at the screen resolution, by focusing on a narrower set of things initially, we think we can drive performance up, battery life up, um, and help ISVs go get their apps done. So if you think about Windows Phone and sort of its, we're, we're barely out of our first year. Um, we're trying to bootstrap this new high quality experience. The approach that we've chosen to take is to focus on a narrower set of things. Um, you take the, the, you pick the screen resolution as an example. Now what I would say is for most consumers walking into a store, or even forget walking into a store, carrying a phone around as their phone for two years on contract, that, that resolution looks very good. And the, you, you take the, any of these phones really, take any of these phones with the technology they have for applying great contrast and making colors pop out, the screens look really nice. Now that's not to say that you can't incrementally improve how things look by increasing resolution. You can. But it does come at the cost of some battery life. You have to put a stronger processor in to drive all those pixels. Yeah. And the, the trade-off that we've made so far is in the combination of battery, smooth, buttery animations and performance, cost, to focus there. Over time, I think you can expect to see us expand the breadth of the kinds of things we're doing. But right now, we think it makes sense But over to really time is a very wide range. <laughs> yes. the, the thing we've been trying to get with guys here at CES is to contract the overtime. Because when they say we're introducing something this year, we're basically at the beginning of January. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't really give us much well, of a... Well, the, the, the good and bad news for you is we're talking at CES about the things that were are announced now and yeah. that are coming really soon. We'll have other announcements and other things to talk about for later in the okay. year. But right now, we're excited about the lineup we have. Well, something that you yourself mentioned is cost. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see Windows Phone fitting in in terms of the competition? I, th I think it's fair to say that Android and iOS are the biggest competitors, uh, and they both have very specific strategies of their, or approaches to the market. iOS uh, wants to keep it very narrow with one uh, hero device. Mm -hmm. Android wants to keep it as versatile and as diverse as possible. Uh, so how does Windows Phone stand out? How, how do you, um, you know, 
how do you tempt somebody away from the iOS and Android ecosystem? Yeah, I think that there are a number of different things that we're thinking about in that regard. One is um, in terms of the value proposition that we want to create for end users. Yeah. Um, we, we started on Windows Phone and looked at the iPhone. We looked at Android was emerging at the time. And we said, well, what are the characteristics of this and what is it good at delivering? iPhone at the time was very focused on apps, good touch experience, good at web browsing. Um, and we felt like we could do a lot by focusing on human connections, deeply integrating social networking, bringing people to the forefront, and trying to do that with a visual appearance that's unique and, yeah. and differentiated. Yeah. No, I, I take the point, but <coughs> it's just, you know, you, you're different and unique. And um, in my personal opinion, the things that you've done are very good, but you know, when the person walks into a store, is the price point going to be something yeah. that you push? Well, where I was going is I think there's sort of two dimensions here that are interesting. One is what's the design and feature set? And what I'd say for us is we have a unique visual design, and we offer a feature set that focuses around people. It's good at apps. In fact, it tries to integrate applications into the experience, but it tries to really make your human connections work well. But then there's a separate sort of uh, track of what's the program, and you characterize the iOS program, it's Apple's you know, relatively narrow set of devices and their, yeah. their ecosystem, and then Android is a very broad one. We're trying to use a methodology that balances those things. We want to get the kind of predictable quality that people generally expect on iOS because it's controlled, but with more variation than you would get only going with one vendor doing deeply integrated hardware and software. And so um, unlike Android, I would say, where with open source, there's the benefit of someone will take that source and they'll engineer the craziest device you can think of and it'll happen really fast. That's, that's what open source enables. We will be slower for those kinds of you know, crazy or speculative things to happen, but our, the trade-off that we're aiming for is higher quality and value. Um, in a way, it's a, it's a little bit of a less edgy early adopter approach. It's more of a broad mainstream approach where we focus on predictability, um, really high quality, you know, ranging from how good are the phone calls to the battery life to the stutteriness of the user experience to being able to count on all the apps running. Sure. Um, and so that's how we, we think about those two things, you know, a unique design and then a program that balances aggressiveness and speed with predictable quality. Okay. Uh, that's a very comprehensive answer, <laughs> yeah, I have to say. Sorry. <laughs> I appreciate it. A little it. long-winded, um, maybe. But it, <clears throat> I mean, I, I want to stick with the price point for just one more question, sure. which is to ask, would you look to match Android devices? I mean, uh, what you just said is you're not looking to fight a spec war with Android, which is fair yeah, enough. Right. Uh, you, you're looking to do, differentiate on, on a different way. But would you look to match Android devices in stores at price points, or would you look to undercut them? Um, I, think, I think in general, matching on price point is the right way to think about it. We have a cost structure, and Windows Phone has a cost structure that's different than Android. Um, you know, Android, for a device vendor to bring it to market, typically requires more engineering investment to do work to fill it out. We think we require less engineering investment, so we're less expensive in that way, we think. Um, we have a license that's different than Android. There's sure. no license for Android. So the cost structures really are different. Um, in terms of supported hardware, um, because Android has the open source model, they can span very wide. And so OEMs do make decisions to drive prices down that, in our opinion, compromise the user experience in ways that are, are particularly unfortunate because they're not detectable by the end user. So I'll give you a good example. Um, we have a lot of debate in our team about whether today we require four-point symmetric multi-touch, which means you can detect multiple fingers. Um, there are a lot of Android phones that ship with just two-point symmetric multi-touch. You can shave some cost off the phone by doing that. The problem is some games won't work right. And as an end user going into a store, you have no way of knowing really whether the phone you're getting has the, the better sure. controller or the less one. So we are going to make decisions that, in, in the service of quality, probably keep us above Android's lowest price point. But I think as a practical matter, the, the low price points that people are looking for will get into those price bands, but Android will always be able to go a little lower than we can. Sure. Um, you also mentioned the standardization in terms of hardware, uh, but recently SD Ericsson announced that in partnership with Nokia, they will ship uh, a Windows Phone device with, SD Ericsson, uh, with an SD Ericsson chipset inside it. How would that affect things? Would, would it have 
Any significant impact? Well, we, we haven't commented specifically on other companies doing chipsets, but if you take that as a hypothetical example, yeah. um, over time, it's certainly our intent to broaden the ecosystem of hardware that's supported by Windows Phone. And if you go sort of look at where we're at in our life cycle, as I said, I think we're, we're in the phase now where we've got a pretty good value proposition. We're building out the number of apps. We're starting to increase the breadth of phones. Um, getting a wider range of chipsets will make sense, and it's something I expect we'll do, but we don't have any announcements about sure. that yet. So let me just, um, let's, let's actually switch over to discuss the upcoming Windows Phone. So we know Windows Phone. We know Windows Phone 7.5. Uh, but we've also heard about Windows Phone Tango, and we've heard about Windows Phone Apollo. Uh, can you tell us anything about Tango? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> very, very brief. <laughs> very brief. Well, because we, we heard, we've heard about Tango <coughs> being re-engineered to make Windows Phone compatible with 256 megabytes of RAM. Uh, anything you can tell us about that? Sorry. No. Uh, roadmap for Tango at all? <laughs> Nothing at all. I think Tango is a cool sounding word. It's a cool sounding word. <laughs> Apollo? It ends in O. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're killing me here. Um, okay, well, what can we look forward to with MWC? Uh, uh, you know, it's too early to say. I think if you look generally at what we're doing, um, I can say that the team certainly is busy doing a whole lot of interesting work. And I know that I know that all of you watching this and you guys would love to hear more specifics, but unfortunately, I just can't talk about those yet. We're trying to um, make sure that we focus on the exciting announcements that we have today, solve the problems, and, and then announce stuff when it's ready. Okay. So, uh, and just to wrap up, uh, we recall Andy Lee's mentioned uh, last year that Microsoft had a vision of one ecosystem, which includes Windows 8, includes mm -hmm. Windows Phone, and Xbox, and all of those things. Um, how are you guys going about making that happen? Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm really excited about 2012 from the perspective of Windows 8 coming to market. And there's a lot of things um, that already align between the Windows 8 plans we've announced and the Windows Phone product that we have now. Um, if you look at the general user experience of live tiles, there's obviously some good alignment there. If you look at the app platform for Windows 8, the app platform for Windows 8 is a combination of ways that developers can write apps. And one of those, the methodology of writing in Silverlight or XAML and C Sharp, is highly similar between what Windows 8 is, uh, is going to be doing and what exists today on the phone. So as a developer, it'll be really easy for you to use a similar or the same tool set, similar or the same language and API access. Um, so we think that's going to help a lot in terms of developers coming to Microsoft, learning the tools, learning the languages, and then being able to target both platforms. OK. So you, you've, I mean, it's kind of evident that you've tried to have a consistent look to the mm -hmm. interface with the start uh, UI. Um, and what you're saying is that basically you try and give consistent tools to developers. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that you know certainly we will do new revisions of the product, which we're just not talking about yet. And you can expect to see and other things. What that about apps? Will we have apps that are consistent across um, all three device platforms? Uh, I mean, if you mean in terms of will developers go and try to take advantage of the similarity in platforms yeah. to write software that inter interacts across both, I'd say it's highly likely they will. Although, you know, right now it's early days, certainly for Windows 8 in terms of getting developers going. And we haven't shown that many apps or talked that much in specific about what developers will be doing. But I think, I think it's right to assume that developers will look at this very similar platform in its user experience and some similarity in the way you go about writing the code and take advantage of that fact. Um, certainly from a Microsoft perspective as well, I think next fall we will talk about Windows 8 and Windows Phone as family products and I think that'll also you know, create more of a momentum around people doing work that crosses both. Okay, Joe. Thanks very much for taking yeah, the time. Yeah, thanks. Good to see Appreciate you. Appreciate it.